Hello, welcome to my bookbinding studio. My name is Chanel, and today I thought I would pull out some old books that I've made from my early years and also tell you how I started. Here is the first one. It's a Coptic Stitch sketchbook. This is one of the first books I've made with Japanese chiogami paper. I was so enamored by the quality of the printing and the paper and the patterns as well. And I'm a sucker for lucky cats. So this book really reminds me of when I was starting to develop my style. I started to more often use a patterned paper for the front cover and a solid paper for the back cover. Here's my Chinese name stamp that I used to put on a lot of my books. Looking back on this, I think the thread doesn't really match the book because it actually um, creates a thicker spine than the rest of the book. And so the papers tend to not sit well together. This, this definitely brings me back. This is another book that I made and it reminds me of when I was experimenting um, a lot with the stitching style and grommets and fabric and also the color of pages. I remember really enjoying going to fabric sample sales and grabbing interesting patterns and different kinds of cloths to try to use as book covers. I really like that this is kind of a 90s aesthetic and I thought that the grommets added a bit of personality to the book. I used black pages because I think white gel pens were really popular. I never ended up using books with black pages anyway, um, but this was a fun project nonetheless. Here is a smaller book. I wanted to play around with the sizing of the books. Um, I realized that small books take as much if not more time than the bigger books. That's why I don't really make smaller Coptic books nowadays. Um, this was one of my favorite papers in the early years. It's a marbled Lakta paper and um, I have and, and probably always will be into the muted color palette. This is also probably the time when I was starting to develop this um, stitch pattern that would characterize my dotted journals these days. Um, the back is covered with a Japanese tissue paper and which ended up being too thin um, because you can see through to the chipboard. It took trying out as many types of papers as I could find to know what works best with the covers, especially because all the papers need to be glued down with PVA and not every paper can stand up to that kind of moisture. Um, I decided to try out the sage green color as the pages in this one. I remember getting paper samples uh, when I was trying to choose the type of paper I would use for my pages and I remember just being overwhelmed by all the whites and ivories. I also wanted to try out brown and green and gray. For my dotted journals I ended up with the most basic off-white. This is the thickest book I've ever made. <laughs> It is a rainbow book. I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could make a book with as many pages as I could fit. This one has 228 pages. As you can see, it's not really sitting that well. I think because there's too much thickness on the spine. 
I decided to go with a plain cover so that the spine could stand out. This book is special to me because it reminds me of all my craft fair days when I was starting to expose my books to the public and this book would always be on my display which would get a lot of people's attention and people would walk over and kind of point to it or ask me about it. That was really fun for me. So how I made the rainbow is I just switched the thread every time I finished a signature. So that's the switch there. Here it is to purple. to blue. This book definitely brings back a lot of fun memories. Okay, this is the last one and it's just for fun. I made this in elementary school and little did eight-year-old Chanel know that she would make a lot more books when she grows older. This was a gift to my mom for Christmas, year 2000. I found it in one of my mom's old boxes and asked for it back because I wanted to um, keep it. Because I think this is truly the first book that I've made. I hope you all enjoyed seeing where I started and reviewing those books definitely brought me down memory lane. A couple of you have asked me why I started bookbinding and I'm going to try to condense the story here. I learned how to bookbind with some friends in 2013 and it was just a fun time and I didn't think much of it. So I really started bookbinding in 2017 when I found myself feeling burnt out from work. I took a deep dive into the craft and I just felt really creative. I was experimenting, I was learning about paper, I was making books as gifts to all my friends and family. And then I decided to start Bitter Melon Bindery. My dream was to be a community organizer. In 2017, I attended a program called Seeding Change in San Francisco's Chinatown with Chinese Progressive Association. And that experience made me want to commit to community organizing forever. I spent the next couple years building an organization in Vancouver and bookbinding was something that I practiced and explored on the weekends. Bookbinding was fun and all, but nonprofit and community organizing was my life. So fast forward to 2020, I burnt out really bad. My body was signaling me in so many ways to leave the situation I was in and I finally did but it was really hard on me. I spent some months coping, going to therapy and when I regained enough energy I found myself returning to bookbinding again. When I was making books I felt some moments of happiness and creativity and those moments became longer moments and it got to a point where when 2021 rolled around I found myself announcing to my partner that I would try bookbinding full-time. There has been a lot of self-doubt but also a lot of momentum towards being creative every day and finding a way to sustain myself with bookbinding. I'm, I'm being really cautious about not burning out again and that is one of the drivers of why I choose to work for myself. I'm just really grateful that I've found bookbinding. It's such an amazing craft and skill and I have so much to learn. There's a whole world to discover and I'm looking forward to spending most of my days learning and practicing and working with paper. Um, it's just been really fun and it's kind of 
hard to believe and imagine that this could be my life. I mean, I'm still in my first year of trying this full time and I'm hoping to make it to my first, you know, full time art business birthday. Um, but I'm feeling in my gut that I will be able to get there. Thank you so, so much for listening and being here today. If you're curious about more of my bookbinding story, let me know and I'll try to answer them in a future video. I really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next time.